this video to support your support mental health awareness week and it's really important that we take some time and just find ourselves especially in this busy world that we're living in so this video is a, a 30 minute video that will give you some techniques to support you during your week the whole of the week so from the start of the day to all the time that we we rest whether that be the evening for you or if you do different hours different working hours you might rest in the in the morning but so this video should support you throughout the whole day so we'll start with a little I always like to start with some breath work so if I'm feeling a little anxious um, there's many forms of pranayama that will help with that but one in particular it's uh, in the west it's called bumblebee breath but actually the proper name is called Brahmari and it's a lovely one to do. It's a really nice, easy way of purifying all the nerve endings. We have 72,000 nerve endings in the body and to purify them, we make a humming sound. It's really easily done. So if you, we're gonna use the flaps of the ears and it's made out of cartilage, but if you have an earring there, you obviously got to press lightly. We're gonna use our index fingers only and then we close the flaps there as we bring them back and it's really nice, the shoulders get a little workout as well. Um, bring the tongue to the roof of the mouth, and then we purify all the nerve endings by making a sound like a bumblebee. It sounds like this. And you just, you go for as long as it's comfortable for you to breathe. So when it sounds less like a bee and more like a moving sound, that's when you need to stop and then take a break and then you can do it again. So let's do a few rounds together. Mm. Just here, my, my it was sounding less like a bee and just starting to sound a bit like a moving cow. That's when you need to stop. Purifies all the nerve endings. Great if you suffer with anxiety, if you suffer with panic attacks, if the energy is low, it's a really nice one to bring it up. And you can do this one standing up. You can do it in your homes. You can do it if you've got outside space. So again, we're going to do it. Close the flaps of the ears. Bring the elbows up and back. Mm. Flaps of the ears, elbows up and back. Mm. It's called Brumari and I find this really helps me, um, especially if I'm feeling a little anxious, I've got a lot of things going on, I need to ground myself, this will help me. Um, and it's really good to calm the nervous system down. So um, worth trying this. And when you can do it as many times as you want to, you can do it standing up. If you've got little ones, you can do it with little ones. You just supervise them. The index fingers, they need to go on the flaps of the ears and they love to make the sound of a B. And that will really ground them as well. And you can supervise it. Just careful that they don't pop the index finger in the eardrum. So close the flaps of the ears. Always supervise if you've got little ones so, so that you can get them into practice safely. Let's close the eyes and let's start to just work with just a minute or so of meditation. If you're new to meditation, it can feel uncomfortable sitting in the position I'm sitting in. So you could sit against a wall and put a blanket around your shoulders, stretch your legs out. I, when I first went to training, that was the way I was able to meditate comfortably because I used to run a lot and my knees were very, very tight. My whole body was tight. So it took a while to sit in this position. So be comfortable, you can sit on a chair, you could lie down in your meditation. So your meditation feels between sleep and wake when you're seated and when you're lying down. But there are walking meditations. So if you're walking and you're in the park or you're walking on the road, you need to be fully present. But when you're seated and when you're lying down, between sleep and wake is a nice state to be in. So close the eyes and start to connect into your heart and find the colour green for the heart towards the left side of your body. Find the right side of your heart. And from here we start to connect into that right side of the heart. 
That's our connection to ourselves and to each other. It's referred to as our spiritual heart. And to help you connect to yourself, because when we're busy at work, serving family, friends, or just generally busy, it can make us feel detached from ourselves, so we connect into ourselves again. When I'm busy, I like to say hello to myself. Connecting to my heart helps me to do that. And quite nice to use an affirmation here. Something that your mind will believe. So repeating that will help you to focus on your meditation with such lightness. So one that I like, a nice affirmation that I like to use is that everything always works out for my highest good. And that's just on the loop and I repeat that when I'm in my meditations, one I use frequently. Or I'm always in the right space at the right time. Something that your mind's going to believe. What it does, it helps you to focus on your meditation. The external environmental noise, there's not much we can do about that. So what we do is we don't block it out. If there's background noise, traffic or people talking or children playing, just let it flow over you. And then after a while, your mind will become oblivious. If you start to block it out, that's what you'll focus on. Keeping the connection to the heart. And gently, we bring some awareness. Start with about a minute for your meditation, and then you can increase it. A minute can feel quite challenging. So before I start my practice, I always like to make an offering and I like to set the intention. So let's say set the intention to practice safely, to be focused, be mindful with our practice. If you're practicing with anyone else, make sure that you're practicing safely and kindly. See where your body wants to go today. So every day, if you practice regularly, every day feels different in your practice. And if you're new to practice, just take your time and see how the body feels. You can always modify. We start to become our own teacher when we start to connect into our bodies and listen to how it feels. Be kind to yourself, be kind to those around you. And the real yoga happens, I think, and I'm often told, I was often told by my dad, happens outside of our space of practice. How we treat ourselves, and how we treat others that we know and meet. And at the same time, think of it as a meditation, as a moving meditation. And let's also make our offering. Devote your practice to someone other than yourself. Let's release the intention and the offering. Let's open with an arm. Oh. Now we're gonna gently make our way up. So slowly does it. If you are lying down, just roll to one side, press lightly through one of the hands and come up carefully. So take your time. When you're seated for a while, sometimes you get pins and needles, so we might need to just gently shake the legs out, shake the arms out, we use the body a lot. And if you're, if you're feeling quite stressed, the shoulders will be quite high, so we drop them down. Think about rolling them back. We tuck in our belly button, so we are engaging a banda called the Mola Banda, and that's going to protect your spine, so it keeps it nice and protected in your practice. And what it does as well, it has a double whammy, it's working the core as well. So think about rolling those shoulders, dropping them down, especially if they're a little tight. Now if you have a strap to hand, you can use a strap to release the shoulders. I use this regularly in most classes. Strap nice and loose, it's in front of you like a skipping rope, and you can roll the shoulders down. And how we use a strap, we just start to lift it up to release the shoulders because we hold a lot of tension here, it can be quite intense. Uh, your shoulders, that's where we hold it. And then we bring it back slowly. It doesn't have to come all the way back like I'm doing now, but this is elasticated so it feels very comfortable. You want to move slowly here, nice to release the back, the shoulders. So as you lift the strap up, the rotator cuffs are getting a little workout. As you bring it back, the back of the neck, the chest, the heart, and it's a gentle stretch. Moving, softly listening to the body. And you can always modify, so this slow, gentle movement. And you can do this, I do this regularly. This strap is elasticated, so it feels lovely. But if you have a normal strap, a fabric strap, 
pop it in the washing machine so it's nice and soft. Do that a few times. The softer it is, I find it's more comfortable to lift it up. And if your shoulders are tight as you bring it back, you bend the elbows. You don't want to stress the body out, it's not yoga. So being kind, stretching is good, pain, avoid it, it's not any form of yoga. Bring the strap over the head here, and now we take a little turn over to the right, and that will release the back, the shoulders, the neck, center, and then over to the other side. And you can do this early in the morning, just take your time when using any equipment. Bring it over the head, over to the right, center, and then over to the left, and that should feel nice. Slowly, we're going to release, pop the strap down, and then from here, if you're using a mat and you're on carpet, it will move, so we need to adjust it from time to time. Um, but if your knees are sore, it's going to feel quite comfortable when you're coming down onto the mat. If you're using, if you're on a hard surface, like a wooden floor, a tile floor, then you can always put something underneath your knees when we get to that part. So from here now, let's start to release the back by catching hold of the elbows or the upper arms. So we don't want to force the neck back, you're going to hurt your neck. What you do is just bring the arm back and we take that stretch and you're going to feel that stretch on the thighs, yeah, on the front of the stomach, gently releasing the back here. We want to try to keep our breath in and out through the nose to keep the energy in the body. And this should feel nice, a little movement here to release the shoulders. Now we're going to go into Uttanasana, forward fold. We're going to bend the knees if we need to. So we square the back up and you can see if your back is a little tight, you bend those knees and you're going to protect your back and make the head nice and heavy. This releases the back here. You're going to look at your feet and just make sure the toes are nice and relaxed because you know, if you scrunch the toes, it's not great for the feet and you're also going to lose the balance. From here, if your back feels like it wants to stretch more, you can always catch hold of the elbows behind the knees. Working with this gentle movement, it's based on the principles of Dharma, Yoga Hatha Raja, we're moving at our own pace. So slowly bring the palms together, prasari to take a little stretch. Now we bend the knees, and we bring the hands down. We step the right foot back, step the left foot back. All the time I'm connecting to my breath, I'm seeing as this practice as a movement, as a movement meditation. Pedal the feet out a little bit, stretch back. We're going to go to Ardha Mukha Savasana, your downward facing dog. Now, I like to keep my feet fairly close together because I find it's better for my back. If my back is tight, I bend the knees, I push into the glutes and straighten the legs here. My heels are up if the back's a little tight. I hug the arms in towards the ears. My head is heavy. Slowly. If your back is tight, you can always have the knees bent. And if your wrists feel sore, you can use blocks. From here, I'm going to bring the knees down from my Adamuka, my down facing dog, and I sit back and I extend. Now this is really lovely for the back, especially if it's tight. Now, if your back is tight, make sure the knees are comfortable, open the knees, keep them on the mat, bring the forearms down, and if the head's not down, you can always put like a blanket like this. You fold it in half, and then you can put your head on the blanket. Or, if your back is really tight, stay on the fingertips. So slowly and carefully we stretch the back. And this in itself, when I'm feeling tired and I haven't got time to rest properly, I stay here for about 10 minutes. So it will release the back, the hips. It can feel a little uncomfortable on the front of the ankles because that gets a stretch here. And if you stay here for a while, sometimes you get pins and needles um, and that will, the sensation will come back after a few breaths, so don't worry about that. Just new blood going to those areas. Now to release the shoulders, we throw the left arm underneath the right, and then from here, you can start to relax the neck a little bit. The left palm will face the ceiling. And if your back is a little tight, release the top hand, place the palm onto the tailbone, and just release it a little bit. Hips are quite close to the heels ideally, but if they're not and you're quite high, you can still do it. The most important thing is we're not hurting our bodies because that's not kind. We slowly release and then we do the other side. Right, on the left and one side will probably feel a little more open than the other. So slowly can release it. And if that's the case, we, what I try to do is my left side is less 
valuable than the right. It's getting there. So I just you do a lot of things at home using the left side of the body, use, like washing up with the left hand, etc. So slowly grooming my dogs with the left hand. So try to use the side that you don't use that much, a little more when you can. From here, from your extended child's, so from here now we're going to come on to all fours. So let's release the back. We hold. This is where we hold tension. So we want to release the back here, and then go in the opposite direction. And I find just connecting to my practice will help me. It helps me to connect back into myself. Helps me with controlling anxiousness and just being present. And just slow it down. And some days my body wants to move fast and some days it doesn't. So you really want to listen to how your body feels each day. So this releases the back. When your back is tight, the lower back is a small movement. When the shoulders and when the neck is a little tight, it's a bigger movement. Cushion the knees if you need to. Just a few cat cows here. So we tuck in the belly button. As we inhale, the tailbone will probably come up. As we release, we look towards the belly button. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale. We use our hands a lot, so this gives them a nice stretch. We release our back at the same time, and exhale. Now, the drishti, that point of focus, looks ahead. We're gonna turn the hands to face in. If your shoulders are tight, you are gonna open up the hands a little bit, and walk the knees back if the head's not over the shoulders. Three times, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Inhale and exhale. If it feels right for you, turn the hands to face in. Now that, if it, we're feeling the stretch on the forearms, anything that feels less like a stretch and more like pain, you don't want to do. Just stay in one of the first positions here. Three times, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale and exhale. And these are great ones to do standalone. You can do these in the morning. Wrist that you use a lot, the front of the hand comes down, the other hand gently give it a little press. Here, the whole of the hand is down. Again, anything that feels like pain, don't do it. Just, you can spend a little longer in one of the other ones that we just did. And then we slowly do the other side. And you can just give the arm a little massage as well. Now, we release the arch of the feet by sitting back on the feet. And here, the plantar fascia, especially I walk barefoot a lot when I'm teaching. I mean, trainers a lot. So I'm on my feet quite a lot. The arch gets a nice stretch here. So you're sitting back on the toes. If it feels painful, then bring the feet flat like this. So that's perfectly fine. So slowly, now we can multitask here. We bring the forearms together, interlace the hands, we move the wrist around. Give the wrist a nice stretch. And while I'm practicing, I either use my affirmation or I like to work on focusing on one of the chakras. And one of the ones that I focus on quite a lot is the Anja chakra, the third eye. I take a stretch here, and then you can take the arms out, and you can take them up. The third eye, that space in between the eyebrows, I go past that area, and way past that area is the trichity, the consciousness we call it in Sanskrit. So the trichity is where I bring my focus, and then that starts to change and the movement feels like a meditation. I take it to the other side and I take it up. So take it past the area, try it and see how that feels for you. So you focus on one of the chakras or focus on your affirmation or whoever you offered your practice to. Shake the hands out and then from here, bring the toes out, take a gentle tap here. That's gonna release the feet. And then from here, we're gonna go back into our Ardha Mukha. We're gonna take a gentle stretch here. We're gonna walk those feet forward, slowly, back into a forward fold. Catch hold of the elbows, make the head nice and heavy. We're releasing the back here. You can bring the hands down. So if your back is tight, you bend those knees slowly. You can hold the ankles, but you wanna hold the body lightly. You can catch hold of the elbows here for a little deeper. Come into Ukatasana, chin. And then start to come all the way up and catch hold of the elbows, release the back. Some gentle movement here. Bring the hands down gently to either side of the front feet. Step the right foot back, step the left foot back. Again, onto all fours, cushion the knees. Now from here, we support sometimes when we're feeling anxious. Our coordination is not so great. So 
here, we start to work on the coordination. And we start to work on the core, and we start to work on our back to open it up, so back bending. So take the left arm out from here, improving the grip by closing the hand. Thumb is always outside like this, and then open, close, open, close, open. The right leg comes up no higher than your hip. You can flex and point the foot. You can even bend the knee. Lots of things happening here, slowly. So improving the coordination. If your back feels like it wants to stretch, we reach back, we never grab, we hold the ankle or the front of the foot. Now, if I look down, I'm tending to lose the balance, I look ahead and that will release my back. Slowly, carefully, I reset. So whatever we do on one side, we're trying to do on the other side. And then from here, I take the right arm out, the left leg. I can bend and straighten, bend and straighten. I can close the hand, open, close, open, close, open. And then I start to reach back. And then I hold, I'm never pulling the foot you don't want to pull and tug at the body because you're going to injure it. And then slowly, gently, I'm going to release back onto all fours. And these are these asanas, these are the staples that I do on a regular basis because my body, sometimes I don't get to practice every, every day. I like to practice at least five times a week because I teach a lot. But if I don't get to practice a lot, then I will stretch to move the body, it helps me mentally as well as physically. So just connecting to yourself. And if you have, I recommend, the weather's got, if you're in the UK at the moment, the weather's quite lovely outside. So take your mat outside, make sure if, uh, if you're in the sun, um, take the appropriate, like wear a hat or something, um, and sunscreen, but practice outside. It's nice to be outside with nature, um, to hear the sounds of nature. You can go to a park, you can do your walking meditation. As I said earlier, you need to be present when you're walking because you're probably going to cross roads wherever you are. Um, you just need to be aware of your surroundings. When you're in your home or aware you're in your office, if you practice in the office, you can be between, you can seat it, you can be between that sleep and wake state. Um, lie down again and sleep and wake because you're in your safe spaces and it's not that it's not safe outside but you want to be present and aware of your surroundings when you're outside so a nice another nice one I, I do when I'm feeling a little anxious I find that my back gets a little sore so there's many things you can do to release your back so you could lie down and take a block or Anything like a block, like a book will do, a hardback book, but the block is kind of, it's got softer edges. So if you've got a book, you could use a book, or you keep a hand, imagine you've got a block in your hands, and then from here, you feel like there's resistance here. So here, you can take the block, and you can stretch your arms out, stretch your legs out. So you're like on a rack, but it's not, it's not torturous, and you're stretching out, you can flex the feet, point your toes, flex, point flex and point. And while we're here, sometimes when we're struggling a little bit, our digestion plays up. So you can bring the feet flat. And then from here, you can keep the right foot where it is, bring the left knee in towards your chest. I avoid the knee because it's robust and also delicate. You don't want to be pulling and tugging at the body. I place the hands in a cradle or individually onto the shin. I bring the left knee into my chest, and if it feels comfortable, I can take it into the left armpit. I don't want to hurt it. This movement here, moving the ankle around, will release the hip. But it's also great for your digestion. I do this in the morning before I come out of bed. I move the pillow. Left side first will help you as well um, with your digestion. If you're struggling to use a bathroom, it will help, definitely. Slowly, we're going to release, stretch the leg out. We do. So from here, you can keep it stretched out if you know that uh, your back feels secure or you bend the knee. And we do now, we do the right side. So you can see now with the leg straight because this is very comfortable for me. I bring it in. I don't overly stretch it. I bring it in towards the right armpit. I turn it around slowly. So left side first, then right. And then move it the other way. And then if my back is tight, I keep the, I can open, I can, do this movement here, 
wrote it. So I always encourage when I'm teaching in class to listen to how your back feels. This might feel very comfortable for me, but it might not be comfortable for you. And then from here, we go bring the feet flat. So that's a really nice, while we're there, that's a nice way to help your digestion in the morning. From here, I can hold the anchors, I can start to lift the hips up. Now, I might not want to come up too high, or I might want to come up higher. And if you have got a bolster, you can take the bolster, and you can pop it underneath here, underneath the hips. Ooh, this feels really nice. And if your shoulders are tight, we bring the arms out, and you can keep the feet there, or if you feel safe in your sacrum, and your back feels safe, you can stretch your legs out here. Just let everything, we're decontracting the body. And this is a nice one to do after you've come out of Urdu Dhanurasana, after you've come out of your full wheel. If your back wants to stretch a little bit more, you walk the feet in. Move this bolster. If you've got a brick, it has to be a brick. You can improvise a lot at home, but when you're putting things underneath the body, you want to have the right equipment. This brick is a cork brick, something. So I lift it up now. Here I place it underneath the sacrum and it's fairly high. I use my hands to make sure that it's secure on the floor. I can bring the arms over, I can chill out here. Or if this is too high, turn it around. So slowly, carefully. For me, this is less comfortable because I prefer it a little higher, supporting my sacrum or flat. Here, this is more comfortable. So there's many ways to use it. When you come out of any bridge again, remember to take the arms out, take the legs out and stretch, flex and stretch the feet, move the hands around, tuck in the belly button. If your back is feeling quite strong, you can press the hands flat and you can start to come up into your seated position. Slowly, if the back is a little sore, all you do is roll to one side, press and gently make your way up that way. And when We'll just do it a couple, I'm just going to keep an eye on time, just a few minutes more. So what I like to do is that when I'm trying to connect back into myself, I might not necessarily be moving. I do have quite, I do teach and practice quite dynamically quite a lot of the time, but more often than not, especially after the pandemic, I have, it's a more restorative, so it is... I'm holding the pose, the asanas, the poses a lot longer. It's more restorative. I'm seeing them as part of the wider, uh, wider practice. So more, all the all the asanas like a, a spiritual journey that I'm going on. So a really nice one to do when I'm feeling a little overwhelmed is I like to go out in my garden. I have a small outside space. I go out there, palms facing forward, and I just drop, drop the shoulders down. And I do take a few inhales, and when you're in this position here, you can take a few inhales through the nose, and out through the mouth, in, and out, in, and out. Just reconnect to myself, it's a really nice one to do, this is a nice one to do, you can do this, you can do this in your spaces at work, just find a space where you can reconnect yourself if you're at work and you're feeling a little overwhelmed. And when you go back to the practice, because we're finishing off the practice now, when you go back to the asanas, you want to try to keep the breath just through the nose, in and out through the nose, to keep the prana, the life force in the body. So from here, so Brixasana, here, tree, very stabilizing, it helps me to connect to myself. I can place the foot either onto the floor or onto the inner, onto the inner shin or onto the inner thigh here. And then from here, I bring the hands to the heart center. Now, if you close the eyes, you tend to lose balance, but if you look at the tip of your nose, then you'll be able to hold it. Here, you can take the arms out into a cactus or bring them up. And you can always be near a wall and use the wall if you need to. Help me to connect to myself. Here, I release, I take the knee up and I open it. Hands on the hips if you need it for balance. Bend the knee, wrap that foot around slowly, carefully around the ankle. So you sit low, and then left around right, Garavasana Eagle. 
great for your reproductive system, good for balance. Then take the arms out and start to fly a little bit. Slowly unwrap, bring the knee up, just shake it out a little bit. Hands onto the hips to release the back. We're going to do the other side. Slowly, carefully. Remember to keep dropping the shoulders down. So from here, because we have, I tend to hold a lot of tension in our shoulders, our necks. Here, this left foot can go on the inside. Staying here. One side's going to feel more open than the other, so working with how it feels, the foot goes onto the inner shin, or we'll place it onto the inner thigh, slowly, carefully. Hands in to prayer, or we'll bring the arms up or out. And then slowly we release, bend the knee a little bit, take the leg out, open it a little bit first if you need to, and then you wrap it around. This side's always a little more less malleable than the other, but it goes around because one, I'm wearing shorts, I'm not hurting myself, bend the knee a little bit, and then the right around left. Slowly. Now this one, so if you, the legs are a bit of a challenge, try sitting down on your sofa, take the arms out, and try on a, in a seated position and wearing shorts, and you'll find you'll probably get it in a week or so. But don't force anything. If something doesn't happen straight away, it normally happens later. So lose a little connection to it. It doesn't matter if it doesn't happen straight away, it will happen. But Garavassan is great for the reproductive system as well, keeping it nice and healthy. From here now, we come down onto, on that, bend the knees if you need to. So this is just a light, 30 minutes worth of practice to connect into ourselves, to reconnect to ourselves, to stretch our body safely, connect the practice to our mind and to help us center ourselves. So there are techniques you can use them as one or you can use them in part um, during your day. When, I, when we finish now, it's really nice to stretch out. So from here, bring the knees into the chest, you can catch hold of the side of the feet, take the legs out wide. You can keep the hand, hands on the shins. Just release your back. We take a little twist over to one side, to the left first. And then if there's a gap between the knees and you happen to have a blanket or a block, or just pop it in between. You don't need to force them together. The head looks up to the sky for the next time. Or we'll take it to the other side. You're going to feel the stretch on the spine to release, to hold the block, feet flat first, and then go to the other side and then use the block. This side here feels more open for me. And then we slowly release. From here, just stretch the legs out, just recenter yourself. And I always like to thank my body and my mind for any practice I've done. It could be half an hour, it could be, it could even be 15 minutes. Whatever time you've done, you've invested in yourself. And it's really nice to thank yourselves. Often we're not very good at thanking ourselves and good at taking positive feedback, but we're good at criticising ourselves. Often that's the case for many people, and I can be like that. So. I'm not now, whenever someone gives me a compliment, I take it. So try to thank your bodies for your practice. Connecting back into yourself if you want a little connection when you're working with the practice. Try not to analyse it. So our practice changes regularly. If you practice with kindness to yourself, to your mind and body, that's enough. From here, bring the thumb and the index finger to lightly touch on each finger. Bring the arms over the head, take a stretch. Now, bring the feet flat. And then we're going to take a, a roll to the right. We're going to stay in the inbreak because here now the tongue relaxes. So we can do that movement with the left knee and then the right knee when we're lying down. And then roll to the right in the morning. So you've done your digestion. 
And now we press lightly, rolling to the right, the tongue relaxes and it helps you to hydrate after your rest. Thank you for joining today. And I hope this has helped you um, bring in awareness and being really kind, trying to be as kind to ourselves as possible. And then when you'll find when we are like that, when you're like that to yourself, then it will be reciprocated to, to you and it will help you as well when you're connecting to others. Thank you so much for joining today. Jane.